Welcome back to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today I want to address a question that was asked on one of my inventor videos. This viewer asked if I could show how to draw a motorcycle windshield and stated that they tried the revolve command but it never ended well. This sounded like a fun challenge so I searched the internet for some motorcycle windshields and found an example of one and thought I would work through one possible workflow to create a shape like this. Before I get started, let me take you through the workflow that I'm going to do. First, I'm going to create two independent sketches that line up at the origin point. Then I am going to sweep one of those sketches along the other to create a curved surface, a surface that's curved in two directions. Then I am going to create a sketch of the overall shape of the windshield. Next, I will extrude that through the first surface. Then I'll use some surface tools to trim to my final shape. Finally, I will thicken it to add some material to this surface. So let's jump into Inventor to try this out. To start with, I'm going to create my bottom curved sketch. So I'll start my sketch tool and select my horizontal XZ plane. I'm going to go ahead and reorient it by clicking the rotate button on the view cube so that my top is oriented correctly and I'm just going to draw in an arc here. So I'll use my three point arc and I'm just going to arbitrarily draw it like so and I'll come back with some constraints to place that. I'm going to start with a coincident constraint to place the midpoint of this arc exactly on the origin point. That's where the two sketches are going to come together. Then to make sure that this is symmetrical, I am going to apply a horizontal constraint to the two endpoints. Then I can place a couple of dimensions. I could place in a radial dimension on the arc, but instead of doing that, I'm going to dimension the length and width of this shape. So I'm going to place a dimension all the way across this part. Now I'm making up some dimensions because I don't have the exact size of windshield that I would want. So I'm going to start with 500 millimeters wide, which would be roughly 20 inches. And then I'm going to go from the midpoint to one of the endpoints here. And I'm going to make this go back 80 millimeters, which would be about three inches. Again, obviously you can make some changes to this based on the exact size windshield and curvature that you're looking for. The other thing that I could do here as well is create, instead of just one arc, a series of tangent arcs to make a more complex shape. Here's an example of a more complicated one where I've got the original arc and then a couple of tangent arcs coming off of it, and you can see the change in shape there. Now that I have this first arc created, I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch, and then I am going to create another sketch, this time on the vertical plane. And I'm once again going to start my arc tool and I'm going to snap to that origin point. And then again, I'll just kind of create my arc here to start. Then I'll go ahead and place some dimensions in. One thing that I want to happen is for this arc to be tangent to this vertical axis. So I'm going to project geometry of that axis, which is the Y axis in my case. That way I can create a tangent constraint between that projected line and the arc. That ensures that the arc is normal to that first sketch. Then I'll place a couple of more dimensions. Once again, if I know the radius value, I can use that. I'm going to instead dimension the height to be 600 millimeters, which is roughly 24 inches. And then I'm going to dimension the width of this sketch to be 200 millimeters, which is roughly eight inches. Again, you can adjust that as needed for the shape that you're looking for. One thing that I would have done if I had a side view of the windshield that I'm creating, I would have imported the image in here and sketched along it so that I could get the exact curvature. Once again, instead of just one arc, this could be a more complex sketch. Here's another example. This time, instead of one arc, I've actually created two tangent arcs and the curvature varies. Back here in the more simple model, I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. Now I have the shape and the path that I want to sweep it along. So I'm going to choose the sweep command. 
and mine automatically went to surface mode. If yours does not, you can go ahead and select the surface mode option here. Now I can select the curve and the path and click OK and I will now have my surface. Next I want to create the outline shape of the windshield. What I'm going to do for this one is I am going to sketch on this vertical plane in front of my surface. And I have already found an image that I want to use as my guide. So I'm going to insert an image into the sketch. I'm going to find this image that I selected earlier from browsing the internet. And then I'll click to place my sketch in here. I can click and drag the edges to resize it. I took this image into Photoshop and cropped it so that it's exactly at its edges. So I'm going to use my coincident constraint to create a coincident between the midpoint of the bottom line here and the origin point. Then I can click and drag the top to resize it and I'll just watch those edges and make sure that I don't go beyond. So I'll just come just inside. Of course I could go ahead and create a coincident constraint there too if I wanted to, but I'm just going to bring it slightly to the inside. Then what I'm going to do is sketch half the shape and mirror it over. So I'm going to start by drawing in a middle vertical line here that I will use to mirror this over. After I draw it, I'm going to select it and make it a construction line. Then I'm simply going to sketch on top of this image. I'll choose my arc tool and start my first point here. I'll begin by drawing my first arc. Before I continue on, I want to make sure that this is tangent to a horizontal line. That way when it mirrors over, it'll give me a nice smooth curve. So I'm going to draw a little construction line here based off of that point. I'll go ahead and select it and make it construction. Then I will apply a tangent constraint between the curve and my construction line. Looks like I already sketched it perfectly to where it was tangent. So that exists already, but obviously if it doesn't exist for you, you want to go ahead and add that. Then I'm going to click the drop down under arc and choose tangent arc and just simply click the end point and create a series of tangent arcs. Now, obviously, you can spend a lot of time getting this just right. I'm not incredibly worried about it because it's just kind of a guide for me. And I'm doing a quick tutorial. But again, you can spend a lot of time trying to get it just perfect. I am going to be coming back and selecting these arcs. So I don't want to create an incredibly large amount of arcs. Again, I'll do my best to match the shape here. Like I'll need another point there. Then I'll come in and snap to that center point there. Once again, I want this to be tangent to a horizontal line. Otherwise, I'll get kind of a point at the top. So I'll draw a horizontal line in here, make it a construction line by selecting it and hitting the construction button. If I come in and place my tangent now, I may goof up my geometry. So let's see what happens. I'll make a tangent between the arc and the line, and you can see all my geometry moved. So I'll undo that. And what I'm going to do instead is lock the location of all of these arcs, except for the last one. So I'll use my lock constraint or fix constraint. And I'll just simply fix all of these arcs in place. That will ensure that they do not move. Then I can go ahead and add that tangent constraint on the last one here. And finally, I can go ahead and fix it as well. Now it does show me that I have a few dimensions needed. Some of that is going to be the endpoints of these construction lines. I might need to actually lock those in. Now you can see I'm down to one dimension. If I go ahead and auto constrain and apply, it's added in one linear dimension here. It actually looks like it's dimensioning the sketch itself since I just clicked and dragged to place it. 
So that's fine, I'll go ahead and keep that dimension there just to get it nice and locked in. Now I'm going to mirror the left side over to the right side. So I'll need to select each of these arcs. I'll hold control so that I can select them all. I could do a window or a crossing, but I want to make sure I don't really get any of the other geometry. I just want the arcs. Looks like I've got them all now. So now I will go and choose my mirror command from the pattern panel. Select the mirror line arrow and select this vertical center line here. Then apply and done. You can see why I wanted to mirror the shape instead of drawing the whole thing because the image that I found on the internet was not perfectly square. So had I traced around the whole shape, I would have had an irregular shape. I'm going to go ahead and select my home button to rotate this. And before I go on, I want to hide this image. So I will expand my sketch here in the browser, right click on the image and turn off its visibility. Next, I want to extrude this shape as a surface through the other surface. So I will finish my sketch, then extrude. It's trying to make a solid part, so I'm going to select my surface mode here in the extrude dialog box. It's going the wrong direction, so I'll flip it to go into the other surface. And I'll just simply put in a larger value, maybe 400 millimeters, as long as that's enough to completely pierce through the original surface. Then I will click OK. Now I have two intersecting surfaces. And I want to use this second surface to trim the first surface. So here in the surface panel, I have the trim tool. I'll select that command. And I can see that by default, it is in the selection mode for the cutting tool. So I want to select this second surface that I made. Then I want to select which portion of the original surface do I want to remove? Do I want to remove the inside portion or the outside portion? So I will select the outside portion and click OK. Now it has trimmed that surface, but it is also left behind the extruded surface. So I'm going to right click on that extruded surface and turn off its visibility. Now we can see the surface. It is just a surface. I want to make a solid part out of it. So I'm going to use the thicken offset command. I'll select the face. For this one, I'm going to use a thickness of four millimeters. And I can decide if the thickness should go to the outside or inside of that original surface that I made. Then click OK. Now I've got the solid and the surface, so I'm going to come back to my browser and right click on that surface and turn off its visibility. Now we can see my final shield shape here. I might want to change its appearance maybe to something clear so that it appears like glass. I had shown a couple of sketches that were a little more complex. Let's look at that example here real quick. So I've got my two sketches. I'll just use the same steps. I will sweep the first curve using the second curve as a path. Then I will create the sketch on the vertical plane in front of the surface. And then once again, I will extrude this one as a surface through the other surface. And then once again, I will use the trim tool. Now currently, I think I have my view set to shaded. So I'll go shaded with edges so we can see that a little bit better. And then once again, I can use the trim tool, select the extruded surface as my cutting tool, then click the outside to remove that portion. Then I can turn off the visibility of my extruded surface. As you can see, it has some little separating lines in here, and that's just because of the tangent curves that I have in here. When I choose my thicken offset tool, it looks like it wants to select each little face separately, but you can choose the option here to select the entire quilt. And then once again, I can select a thickness and a direction and click OK. Then I can go ahead and turn off the visibility of the surface. I had already set this one to a clear green material. And there we can see the completed shape. 
again I've got these lines just because there's tangencies there if you do change the view to shaded or realistic then you just get one nice smooth piece of glass which again is a a little bit more complex than the first one that I created. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe and if you would like to see me create a specific model feel free to comment and I will see what I can do. As always thank you for watching.